Hi YouTube, this is Abraham John Moeller again. In this video, I'll show you my updated, vastly improved ADSB plane tracking setup that's picked up, let's see, over 1,500 planes in less than 24 hours from here in Oxford, Ohio. I have gotten such a good result because of improvements both in the antenna and the tracking software. Truly just the antenna, that's, that's the improvement that made it possible to track these many planes, but in order to know how many planes they track, the, the changes in software have been really important. I'll start with the antenna. That is right up here at the top of this four foot piece of PVC. What kind of antenna is this? Well, it turns out that this is a spider antenna. Why is it called that? Well, duh, it looks like a spider. At the top of the PVC is 69 millimeters or a quarter wave driven element that absorbs 1090 megahertz RF, the frequency at which ADSB packets are transmitted. And then what you'll see is a ground plane that makes up the legs of the spider. That's six pieces of coax that are each 69 millimeters long along with a little branch that goes into the space between the ground shielding and the insulation. Those are ground radials that together form a ground plane. The ground and ground plane are important for multiple reasons. One is reflecting RF into the driven element of the desired frequency, providing low impedance for all frequencies other than those that are desired, building up capacitance because of the multiple ground radials, which makes these look physically longer than they are, and of course as a DC ground, just providing a good reference to which the voltage and signal is based. I guess the biggest thing is, is you know, properly matching the impedance of the antenna and making it look virtually longer. So all those things go together in the design of the spider, or really any antenna, but all those ground radials seem to improve reception a lot. I went from 20 planes or so in the day and then 5 in the evening with a very simple dipole, which I'll shift to now. I didn't have it oriented like this. I had it properly vertically polarized as ADSB packets are. This dipole is at the right length. So again, I went from 5 in the evening, 20 in daytime with this, up to now 50 at a time maximum in the day and 10 or 20 in the evening with my elevated spider antenna at the top of the PVC. This is all made out of coax. I just stripped pieces of coax to get the radials and the end of one long piece of coax for the driven element. Thinking about how I'll store this, I might put in a shield of some sort to protect the spider from bending. It's already got bent a few times, but I've been able to put it back in the right form pretty easily. It again is at the top cap of a four foot piece of PVC, which right now is nestled into this couch as you can see there right now i'm in oxford with it i think i'll take it to atlanta and i also think i might compare it to other adsb antennas one popular one is the coax collinear antenna i tried to build that but i failed because my elements were too short these are the advantages and disadvantages of the spider relative to the coax collinear the spider will track more airplanes. Uh, let me think about this. It will higher up in the sky at the expense of range or distance further away. A coax collinear antenna will get more planes further away. A spider antenna will get more planes right overhead that are higher up, which would be lost from coax collinear. Anyway, so I'm going to be going to Atlanta with this, taking it to my apartment, and I think Atlanta will probably have a lot of planes flying overhead given Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, so I think the spider should be really good in that application. 
And with that said, let's take a look at the software interface, the HTTP output, which hopefully isn't too slow. I'm going to show a few things here. One part of this is of this of my new software setup is Read SB, which is a newer version of Dump 1090 from the ADSB Exchange project. Thank you, Tanner Hajliolu, uh, uh, for your help getting this. Uh, set up. It's I, I love the interface. I get different color planes based on altitude. What you can interestingly see in Read SB is that there's uh, more reddish planes right nearby, which makes sense. So lower planes nearby and then higher ones much further away. I guess that has to do with the way the antenna is polarized as, as far as uh, you know, how it's polarized and, and whether it's directed towards up or towards the horizon. I, interestingly, I seem to, to get, you know, lower planes nearby and then higher planes further away. I, you know, I guess that um, isn't all that shocking. So that's one part of it. These planes are colored based on altitude. Yeah, I have higher planes out towards Cleveland. I've even picked stuff up over Ontario. The other thing you'll notice in this output, and I'll try and zoom into the planes a bit more to get a good picture of this, is that the planes have different shapes based on whether they're jets, you know, cargo or passenger jets, or smaller personal jets and, and, and planes, so you can see that clearly. And if finally, there's a nicely annotated list of planes on the right. The ICAO registration, oh, we've got Mexican flight up here, VTM 760. It's a little slow on me. Anyway, so ICAO, the country of registration, flight number, civilian or military, uh, squawk, I'm not sure what what um, that is exactly. Aero novice TSM. Hmm, I'll have to look that up. Anyway, squawk, altitude, speed, distance, and in nautical miles, and I imagine, and of course coordinates here. I I think there would also be um, direction, but you know that's annotated on the plane itself. Very, very nice interface. It's running a little slow for me. This is an older Chromebook, so that could be why, but I, I, I love it. So what's the other thing that I'm using that's so advanced? Well, I, two things. One, I have Graphs 1090, which provides... I'll take a second. Yeah, it provides statistics on the ADSB message rate. You can see how many aircraft seen or tracked at one time. I had a peak of about 51. And messages received on the left-hand side, more messages per second received on the left-hand side, and then uh, positions per second on the right-hand side. Let me go down. Um, yeah, yeah. So I can see a number of aircraft seen or tracked at a given time. This is another part of my software setup. A uh, number of tracks seen. Uh, signal level. You can see that there's a low point in the early morning. Friday at midnight to Friday at 6 a.m. And then start picking up. And you know now I've got 1,535 uh, flights that have been tracked. Okay, and I'll keep going down. CPU utilization. And something about the internet performance. Yeah, bandwidth usage, memory utilization, and so on. I think that's that's for everything, though. Nice system statistics there. Okay. So all these statistics are nicely tracked with Graphs 1090, which is super cool. And look at that. You know, I could go up to three years average. Now, what's the final part of the software setup? So I had read SSB, very nice. Nicely annotated radar, if you will. It's not quite radar, but it's ADSB tracking. I had Graphs 1090 with performance of the aircraft detector. And finally, I've set up my machine as a feeder for ADSB exchange. I'm part of this crowd effort tracking planes all over the world. To help people out who are flying or you know need to have other reasons to know that information. Through this feeding and my access to the ADSB service, I can 
collect all the flight tracks I've mapped over a given time and you know get statistics on number of aircraft and what area is covered. Note that my antenna is mounted indoors next to a window, but you know there's multiple walls that would interfere with reception to the southwest and east. Take a look at this. These are all the flights that I've tracked over. I have to think about this a 18 hour period, 18, 19 hour period or so. We can see that I'd say this is probably within 100 nautical miles. There's a good cluster that's uh, detected. These are also color coded by altitude, so those just overhead are lower. Out to Minneapolis, or Minneapolis, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus, Fort Wayne, Detroit, Cleveland, and then Ontario up here. I could very clearly see the region that's detectable, and I found planes up to 200 nautical miles away. All these statistics recorded in ADSB exchange. I was able to do this by setting, um, I think this is tracking, hopefully that comes up. Yeah, that should say, yeah, all tracks. So, so I, I see tracks that have stayed, and I've run this in persistent mode, so it just keeps the tracks that have been recorded previously. It's incredible. I, I was not expecting that I, you know, I'd, I'd be able to detect over 1,500 planes in a day. I bet I'll, in Atlanta, I'll pick out a lot more, and it'll be really interesting to compare that. Eventually, what I hope to do is, instead of tying up a Chromebook with this, just take a Raspberry Pi, plug in my Neuolec SDR and this antenna, and then you know, let that sit as a little Internet of Things component, uh, that component being a flight tracker. Let that chore be handled by a Raspberry Pi. But very, very cool. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm glad to contribute to ADSB exchange, and I can't wait to see what I can pick up next. Already the other day, I found a spirit flight on the screen and looked up and saw it in the sky. I saw the plane in the sky headed out northeast, probably towards Cleveland, and that was incredible. So maybe this will have a nice coupling with photography. Get the DSLR out with a super long telescopic lens and get some nice shots of passenger and cargo jets up in the sky with the help of this tracking system. I hope that's helpful, everyone. If you have any questions about how I set this up, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can and, and do what I can to help. Otherwise, definitely take a look at the ADSB Exchange pro uh, project in the description down below. And please do this, try and do this yourself. My antenna costs absolutely nothing. It was just made out of parts that I have lying around. And I think that concludes it. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your attention. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Bye now.